Now, here are David Asman and Elizabeth McDonald. It's Matt McCall, this question. Matt, would uh, hiking taxes on the upper bracket fix the deficit? <laughs> no, it's not going to fix the deficit. Uh, number one, yes, they, they pay the majority of the taxes, so you can make a case there. However, by hiking the taxes on them, first of all, they're going to find ways to not pay the taxes. They're going to do something to get around that. But that's going to completely slow down our economy. If I'm the person who, who employs 200 people and I'm getting hit with larger taxes, I'm now employing 170 people. Multiply that by thousands of companies, and all of a sudden unemployment's at 13 percent, and this economy completely falls apart. And Todd, that's a great point that Elizabeth brought up. The fact is that even if the government government does get $700 billion by raising taxes, where would that money be better spent? By going to the government, where you're going to give it to bureaucrats who say they're going to use it to pay off the debt, where they, they never had before, or by giving it to the private sector? Well, you got to pay off the debt. There's no doubt about it. But and they're we, not you know, when use we go it to back pay to, off the debt. That's the point. But hold on, though. When you go back to Nicole on Wall Street, and Nicole's talking to the traders, and they're, they want to see some type of tax cuts, it's not going to happen right now because he keeps spending. This administration continues to spend. If you want to cut taxes and you want to see a tax break in the future, you have to stop spending. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Uh, uh, yeah. So when you talk about $700 billion, he's going to throw that money spending. right. He's just going to uh, spend uh, it anyway. It doesn't matter spending, what we do. No. Spending first... and crushing ca spending, crushing capitalism. And really crushing the American dream as well. All right, gang. Exactly. We gotta you got to stop spending. We have an excited group. We're going to be continuing with them in just a <laughs> moment. Steve Forbes, thank you for joining our panel. Thank you. Next up is President Obama taking a cue from Monty Hall. <laughs> is he ready to make a deal on those tax hikes with Republicans? Something he said today could have tipped his hand. We'll tell you what that was coming up next. President Obama using today's news conference to reiterate his pledge to do what it takes to spur an economic recovery. I will keep on trying to stimulate growth and jobs uh, for as long as I'm president of the United States. Does this mean despite our crushing deficit, we are going to see the government spending even more money? Todd, what do you think? Absolutely. I mean, so far from the first stimulus that was passed in March of 2009, we still have $275 billion that's sitting on the table right now that hasn't been spent. Now he wants to spend another $50 billion, and he doesn't want to call it a stimulus, but we all know that that's what it is. And it's all for these shovel-ready jobs. I don't know who's shoveling or what they're ready for, but they are not spending the money in the right places. All right, and Mike, you're okay with that. Mike, you're good with that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, David, somebody's got to spend. I mean, if, you, if we all sit on our money, there's no economy. Uh, can you, can can you kind of understand that? I mean, somebody's got to spend. Right, but and think right about now, what the wait money's a second, for, Mike. We're wait trying a to buy. Second, okay, Todd, right. out there, wherever you are. <laughs> let me finish. <laughs> somebody's got to spend, man. And, and the private sector right. right now, for whatever reason, Businesses are not spending enough to bring the unemployment rate down. The government is the only entity that can step in. And, and Liz, okay. you say the crushing deficit crushed what? Give me one bad thing. Point but to one my, bad my thing. My stimulus the Mike, is for cars Crazy. and for houses that we don't Hello, need. Todd. We're not spending the money. <laughs> all, all homeowners want to do is, is pick up their savings and get out of debt. That's all they want. Which and you're is not what seeing that right now Which, because there's exactly, no strategy have, for creating jobs. All right, Mike, hang on for a second because we want to bring Matt McCall and, and Nicole Pedalides after Matt into the debate. But Matt, are we speaking Japanese without even knowing it? In other words, Japan did yeah. not clean up its banking sector and it's gone the spending route and Japan is in its second decade of being in a zombie economy. No, I don't think we're going to ride in Japan. I, th I, I don't need a comparison. And you hear that a lot. I don't think we're even close to that. God bless you, Nicole. Um, I, you know, I think I, I actually agree with Mike. We, spending has to be done because that's how we get out of this Somebody's mess. But, Mike, I don't agree with you that the government should be spending. Who's I think the government spend? should do something to stimulate these small businesses and, and the big corporations well, here. Well, here's and that that it trickles down. And that's no, 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 it doesn't take capital away from the, the private small sector. Business. Here's the way you stimulate quickly, small quickly, business. Quickly, you got to give, you gotta give income to people so that they could spend, so businesses see their right. orders Nicole, pick up, and that's going to stimulate matter, the Does it matter to the traders on the floor whether the spending takes place in the public or the private sector? They don't want the government spending any more. Do not spend any more of our money, our taxpayer dollars. They want to see the money going to the private sector so that folks, Americans, can decide how to spend their money. And if you raise taxes on people during a recessionary time, very difficult. We want to stimulate the economy. Right. Let me have, hold taxes. on to my money, right? 
All right, Nicole, you're talking about money here a lot. You're saying the word money a lot because you know why? Uh -oh. It's time for Who that Made Money Today. Who made money today? <laughs> First up, Kansas yeah, State baby. University nutrition professor Mark Howe. Take a look at this. The 40-year-old is proving what everyone always hoped is true. You can eat whatever you want and lose weight. Wow. He began a junk food diet August 25th, eating high-calorie, high-fat foods like donuts, Sticky buns and Twinkies. Yeah, the, that is the, my diet. the only that problem is, is my diet. <laughs> you have a heart attack. Now, and yeah, now he's a diabetic. Okay, so he's got another problem he's got to deal with. Well, here's what he's doing. He's essentially trying to argue that junk foods can actually help people lose weight. And so far for him, guess what? It's working, gang. He's already dropped seven pounds. Wow. I ate three slices of cookie dough oh. last night. It stops me from eating everything else. Water weight. Hilarious. I'm on the Tic Tac diet myself. It's not really working. <laughs> Next up, Gloria Darlene Page and her groom, Charlie Vanderpool. They said their I do's with the Houdat Nation, at least the football fans, outside the Louisiana Superdome Ooh, cool. right before the Saints NFL season opener. Now look at this, David. The groom wore a boutonniere with a tiny, little tiny Saints helmet. The bride, she wore a beaded headpiece in Saints colors, black and gold. Vanderpool chose the date. He says being a lifelong Saints they, fan has made the crowd tailgating outside the Superdome now like the, family. Now uh, the Who Detroit that? Lions want them to do the very same thing outside of their stadium because maybe it's good luck for them. <laughs> the Houdat Nation is insane. I was at the Super Bowl and they are so hilarious, it's exciting. They're well, fast. guess what happened, Nicole? The Saints went on to celebrate the newly, newlyweds' nuptials with a win over the Minnesota Vikings. Right. 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 Good luck. Who needs Brett Favre? Now to who <laughs> lost <laughs> money today? Madonna's daughter, Lord. Leon. She's raising eyebrows Lord with her first Leon. day of school outfit, particularly the pot leaf wristband she seems to sport wherever <laughs> she wow. goes. Yes, that's a pot leaf on her. Now, the 13 year old was spotting, spotted wearing the multicolored band on her way to the first day of class at New York City's LaGuardia High School. Perhaps she's trying to make a fashion statement here. Well, little yeah. Lord is, well, she's already the head and, of her own. To say nothing of the Maybe. little uh, silver spoon hanging around her. Easy, <laughs> oh, no, she's easy. Going to public he made that, that up. That is a New York City public school. What silver public spoon? School. Like born with a silver easy. spoon in your mouth, right? Oh, all right. That's all I meant. Yeah. That's all I meant. Guys, I thought okay. Madonna. Next up, <laughs> public school. Next up for who lost money today? A very little girl who definitely needs a little help with her dancing skills. Yes, that's me. It's a little girl dancing what? with the Beatles. What? <laughs> help. I mean, that's me. Look at that. Look, look at the tights. That's With your tights right around there. My tights around ankles. my knees. <laughs> We're dancing to the Ed Sullivan Show back in 1965. It was the Beatles' last of wow. three appearance on this variety show. 45 years ago this weekend, and 45th anniversary. And the moral is, if you dance like that as a kid, you end up being a business news anchor. So <laughs> look, just, look, yeah. look, they got rid of again. Oh my <laughs> Those God. are my brothers and sisters. Where's look, I can't dance. dance. I needed help you? with my tights. No, you are. Look at them all. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So you haven't fallen down ago. yet? I mean, yeah. it's been in well, for 10 minutes over there. Look, my kicking. And look, I can't kick. My tights are around my knees. Well, you don't see the rest of the siblings because you've knocked them all out with kicks. That's, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> That's adorable. That's Mike Norman trying to push yeah. it to the ground. Right, exactly. <laughs> All right, that's who made, who made that and lost fun. money today. That what did they use, awesome. Super 8 for that? Yeah, Super 8. That, that was before was, videos. It was 1965. Wow, Pretty that hilarious. is cool stuff. Federal employees wow. work for us, folks, but many are not paying us their fair share. Now, Jerry Willis says, be mad, be angry, but don't be surprised. She's watching your money, and she's up next. Don't go away. We ran out of show today with what you need to know. We got a question. Stocks firmly in the green so far this month. Can we expect the same for the rest of the September? Matt, what do you think? Well, I have a pretty boring answer. I think we're going to be at the same place we are now at the end of September. But along that way, we're going to have a bit of a wild ride. I think we're going to have some ups and downs. Uh, people are really digesting. Are we going to a double dip? Are we not? Uh, what's going to happen with the elections coming up? And we're going to see this debate from day to day. We haven't talked about the double dip at all this week, really over the last two weeks. But if we have two down days, suddenly that double dip is the headline again. Wow. So we're going to have a lot up and down, but stay the same place. Mike, more mood swings in the market? No, actually, I'm pretty optimistic. I think we're going up. I mean, we're starting to see some things in the economic data. Look, we had an improvement in the trade deficit. We had a big increase in wholesale inventory, so inventory building again by business. The third quarter is looking so far, GDP, a lot better than the second quarter. And there is a lot of pessimism here. So as a trader, you know, that's sort of a contrarian indicator. I like it. And then 
Look, if we get a, a strong Republican showing in the midterms, I think there's going to be a euphoria.